In this chapter, we're going to do a deep dive on color scopes. Color scopes are essential for making sure that your colors actually are what you think they are and not just how they look on your screen or how they might look to your eye. It's a way to technically measure where your colors actually are. And this is really important because kind of like we talked about in the environment lesson, your eyes can adjust to make an image look correct even if the image isn't correct. If you've ever tried wearing like tinted sunglasses that maybe have a yellow kind of tinge to them, after a while you kind of stop noticing that yellow tint. And then when you take your glasses off, everything looks kind of blue. That's because our eyes are always adjusting. So scopes are a really great way to see if something is actually white or if it is actually really dark or actually really light without having to rely on just your eyes or just your monitor. So here in Resolve in the lower left hand corner behind our keyframes, we have our scopes. And if we click this little expand button, that will bring up by default four of our scopes. Now, this might look really complicated, <laughs> but the basic concepts here are actually pretty easy. Let's take a look. By default, we have four different color scopes inside of Resolve. The Parade, the Waveform, the Vector Scope, and the Histogram. And like I said, these are all just different ways of viewing what the colors in our image actually are. The one that I like to start out with is the Waveform. And at its default settings, it can be a little bit hard to explain. So I'm gonna switch a couple settings here under this little settings thing, I'm going to turn off colorize and I'm going to go up here and click on Y. What this is going to do is kind of take away some of the fancy things and just give us our very basic waveform scope. You see what this is, is actually a graph. We have the X axis going down here and the Y axis going up and down. And the waveform is primarily a graph to figure out how bright things are. Down here at zero, this is like perfect black, and up here at 1023, that's like perfect white. And everything in between is somewhere between the very darkest it could be and the very lightest it could be. So that is the Y axis, how bright things are. And on the X axis, this is where things are on screen horizontally. So something that's on the right side of the screen is going to be on the right side of the graph. Something that's in the middle of the screen is gonna be in the middle, and something that's on the left side is gonna be on the left. But it doesn't track whether it's at the top or the bottom of the screen, it only tracks left and right and brightness. So the waveform scope is really just a graph of the brightness on the Y axis and the horizontal position on the X axis. And what it's sort of doing is drawing a line to kind of represent what's in your image. So if we were to do kind of a simple version of this ourselves, we can look at it this way. If we were to start on the left, and kind of make a graph of how bright things are right here. These are really dark. So let's make a little dot here. So these are really dark. Then let's see, in this little column, it's still pretty dark. In this column, it's still pretty dark. In this column, it's starting to get a little bit brighter. So maybe we'll put this up here. Then it's getting a little brighter still. Then it's getting even brighter. Ooh, now it's a little bit darker. And now it's a little brighter than it was. This is about the same. This is maybe about the same. Ooh, look, this right here is really bright. So maybe that's up here. This is maybe not so much, not so much. And then we're kind of back down to where we were, a little bit darker, a little bit darker, really, really dark, really dark, okay? So now we have this kind of line that graphs how light or dark things are in the image as you go across. And this is basically what a waveform does. So if we were to get rid of that image, we can still have quite a bit of data about what our image is. It's something that's kind of dark on the left and dark on the right, and it has something that's pretty bright in the middle. So you can kind of tell how things relate to each other, but you can also tell how bright or dark they are. This part up here, it's really bright, but maybe it's not the very brightest it could be. That's why it's right here. This is maybe not the very darkest it could be, so it's not all the way at the bottom. So this is a great tool if you're trying to figure out how bright or dark something is on screen. You can have sort of an idea of where an element is on the scope by whether it's on the left or the right side of the scope and how bright it is by how far up or down it is on the Y axis. So here we have a shot of our actress and it's really dark on the left side 
Then about a third of the way in, it's really bright, and then it kind of gets dark here. So we would expect our waveform to show something like that. Here we have it really dark on the left, and then things get bright about a third of the way in, and then they go back dark again on this side. And then we see we have this little spike right here, and that's this tree that's a little bit brighter right here. This little spike right here is this tree. So it's pretty easy to find something on the waveform based on kind of your guess on how bright it is and then where it is from left to right on the screen. This little patch right here is this kind of lighter bush right here. So if this makes sense, you've actually already learned not only the waveform, but the parade. The parade is just three waveforms right next to each other, but it's only looking at the red pixels, the green pixels, and the blue pixels. So this is the brightness of the red channel, this is the brightness of the green channel, and this is the brightness of the blue channel. So what do I mean by red, green, and blue channels? Well, everything on a screen, every pixel, is made out of a set of red, green, and blue lights. So each pixel actually has three little colors, and depending on how bright each channel is, that determines what color this actually looks like when you zoom out. So if we zoom out here, we see this kind of turns white. Equal parts red, green, and blue makes white light. And same thing if you had equal parts red, green, and blue, but it was only like half brightness, that would make something like gray. If you wanted to make blue, you would have no red, no green, and full blue. That's gonna give you this pure kind of blue color. And so any color that you see on screen is really just a mixture of red, green, and blue. So here we have each of these channels split out so that you can kind of tell not only how bright something is, not only where it is on the screen, but roughly what kind of color is being shown by comparing these three channels. If we look just at these channels, we can see this bright part right here is her face. I know that because this is just a squished waveform like this. So this is the right side of the screen. This is the left side of the screen. And about a third of the way in is her face and it's really bright. Okay, well, it's really high in the red channel. And the second highest channel is blue. And if you put red and blue together and there's not a whole lot of green, it turns out to be magenta. So I could look just by looking at this scope that there's a lot of magenta in the image because we have a big red channel, a medium sized blue channel and a little baby green channel. Let's try this another way. I'm gonna bring up another random shot. And just looking at the scope, we can tell a few different things. One is there's nothing that's really, really bright because there's nothing up here kind of in the 7, 800 range. Everything's kind of middle range. So there's nothing that's really bright. There are some things that are a little bit darker because we do have some kind of darker data here. And everything from left to right is very similar brightness. There's a lot of kind of the same color tones here. But what's interesting is the red channel is kind of the same all the way through. This right side, the red is pretty high, followed by the blue and the green just under that, which means that it's probably, again, it's sort of a magenta, but there's a little bit more green, so it's not gonna be quite as strong. We also have this big spike up here in the green and blue channels, which means that there's something that's, oh, I don't know, about a third of the way through the shot that doesn't have much red in it. And if you have a lot of blue and a lot of green and not a whole lot of red, you get sort of a cyan. So we're gonna be looking at an image that isn't very bright, but there is some kind of subject here that is sort of a mid brightness cyan. And to the right of him is gonna be kind of a deeper magenta, sort of more purple tone. And we can tell all of that just by looking at the scopes. So if I move this over, we can see we have our little puppet here. And of course he is sort of a mid brightness cyan, this kind of bluish. And then here we have the purple background. So you can really tell a lot just by looking at the scopes. And the more you practice, the more you look at a shot, the more you can kind of really learn about it. We can also do this the other way. I'll move our scope off here and go to shot 74. Here we have a very dark, so this is actually the beginning of a shot, but let's just stay at the beginning. We have a really dark shot. So our scope is gonna be mostly at the bottom. And then right here where this kind of white part is, it's gonna be up a little bit and then it's gonna go back down. So we're gonna have mostly at the bottom, there's gonna be a little spike here, little spike here, bigger spike here, and dark here. This spike 
is going to be mostly in the green and blue channels. This one and this one. We're going to have a little red spike here. This one's going to be mostly equal, except for a little bit higher in the red channel. So let's take a look. So here we have, it's dark all the way through. And then we have our little spike here, which is mostly in the green and blue. That's right. This one's going to be mostly in the green and blue. Yep. And then we have this spike, which is here. And it's just a little bit high in the red channel. Looks like there's a little more blue than I initially saw there. That's why you have the scopes, because I would have kind of guessed this is more red, but it actually is a little bit more purple than I thought. So you can really tell a lot about your image by looking at the scopes. So that's the waveform and the parade. 